Jesus gave his life a ransom yonder on Calvary, on Mount Calvary, cruel Calvary. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I welcome you to Encounter with the Truth broadcast. In this lesson, we want to look at the topic, the message of Christ and the message of Muhammad, conflict or conciliation. When Prophet Muhammad came in the 7th century, one of the claims that he made was that the message he came with, that is the Quran, came to confirm the message of Christianity. Where did Muhammad make this assertion? Let's go through the Quran and read this assertion that Prophet Muhammad made about the Judeo-Christian scriptures or the Bible. We have three main books of authority in Islam. Number one, the Quran. Number two, the Hadith. Then number three, the Sirah. All these three books of authority have been projected on your screen. Now, let's read something from Surah 4, Ayah 47. That is Quran chapter number 4, verse number 47. This is what that passage read. All you people of the book, believe in what we have now revealed, confirming what was already with you. Surah 4, Ayah 47, or Surah 4, Verse 47. Now, we also read in Surah 3, Ayah 3 to 4. That's what that passage also says. It is He who sent down to you, step by step, in truth, the book, confirming what went before it. I take it again. It is He who sent down to you, step by step, in truth, the book, confirming what went before it. So according to these passages, the Quran came to confirm the message of the Bible or the message of the people of the book. Anytime you read the Quran and you come to the phrase or you read the phrase people of the book in Arabic, Ahl al-Kitab, it means Jews and Christians. Jews and Christians. So according to these passages of the Quran, Surah 4, Ayah 47, then Surah 3, Ayah 3 to 4, the message of the Quran came to confirm the message of the Bible. Not only that, Prophet Muhammad also claimed that the God that sent him is the same God that is being worshipped by the Jewish and the Christians. Where did Muhammad say, say this? Let's read something from Surah 29, Ayah 46. Surah 29, Ayah 46. That's what Prophet Muhammad claimed in the Quran. We believe in the revelation which has come down to us and in that which came down to you. That is the Jews and the Christians. Our God and your God is one and it is to him we bow in Islam. Surah 29, Ayah 46. Surah al Antabut, Ayah 46. This is what Prophet Muhammad claimed about the Judeo-Christian scriptures and the God of the Jews and the Christians. So in this lesson, we want to examine the teachings of Jesus Christ and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad as recorded to us in the Quran and in the Hadith and the Sirah and the Bible to check out whether indeed this claim of the Quran is indeed true or false. So let's ask Jesus. Jesus Christ, what did you teach about your nature? Who is Jesus Christ? Let's read from the New Testament to find out the kind of person Jesus Christ is. Let's take our Bible to Gospel according to Mark, chapter number 14, verse number 61 to 62. Gospel according to Mark, chapter number 14, verse number 61 to 62. Again, the high priest asked him, saying to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? So this was the question that was posed to Jesus by the Jewish Sanhedrin, the highest court at that time. Jesus, are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed, the Son of God? Let's listen to what Jesus responded, how Jesus responded to this question. And Jesus said, I am. And Jesus said, I am in Greek, ego eme. I am. So in this very passage, Jesus claimed to be the Son of God, the divine Son of God. 
That is not the only passage Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. In the Gospel according to John, chapter number 10, verse number 36. Gospel according to John, chapter number 10, verse number 36. Do you say of him, whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming, because I said I am the Son of God? So in this very passage, Jesus claimed to be the Son of God, and some people think that he was committing blasphemy for saying he is the Son of God. So in the New Testament, Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. More often than not, in the New Testament, you see the disciples of Christ referring to him as the Son of God, Son of God, Son of God, and Jesus himself referring to God as his Father, meaning he is a son to that Father, or that God that sent him. So according to the Holy Bible, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And it is this truth of the scripture that the Christian church is founded upon. That is why if you go to Gospel according to Matthew, chapter number 16, verse number 18, Jesus Christ said, Upon this rock, I, Jesus, will build my church. And the rock there has reference to his nature as the Son of God, as Peter confessed. In Matthew chapter number 16, verse number 13, that Christ, you are the Christ, the Son of the Blessed. So according to the Holy Bible, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And even in the Old Testament, the prophets who prophesied about the coming Messiah all prophesied or taught that the Messiah coming will be the Son of the Most High God. Let me read to you some of these passages in the Old Testament. Proverbs chapter 30 verse number 4. Listen to what the wise man penned. Who has ascended into heaven or descended? Who has guided the winds in his foot? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is the son's name? If you know, hallelujah. So according to this Old Testament passage, the writer of this passage believed that God who did all these marvelous things has a, a, has a son. And he, he has a question. What is his son's name? If you know. Many centuries after this passage was penned, Jesus of Nazareth claimed to be that son of God who came to save man from sin. Then we also read from Isaiah chapter 9 verse number 6. Isaiah chapter 9 verse number 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. So according to prophet Isaiah, the Messiah coming will be a son. A son that is given. A son that is given. So it means the Bezer coming is already a son. Not that he is becoming a son, but unto us a son is given. So according to this Old Testament prophets, Proverbs chapter 30 verse number 4 and Isaiah chapter 9 verse number 6, the Messiah coming is going to be a divine son of God. So according to the Holy Bible, Jesus is the son of God. And Prophet Muhammad also claimed that the message of the Quran came to confirm the message of the Bible. The message of the Quran came to confirm the message of the Bible. And the very God Jews and Christians are worshipping are the very God, that same God that sent Muhammad, and it is that same God all Muslims are worshipping. So, is Prophet Muhammad going to confirm the doctrine of the Bible that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the divine Son of God? Is Muhammad going to confirm this message of the Bible? Let's check it out. Surah 9, Ayat 30. Surah 9, Ayat 30. That is Quran chapter 9, verse number 30. Let's listen to the position of the Quran on the sonship of God, uh, on the sonship of Christ. Whether the Quran is going to confirm to us that Jesus is the Son of God or not. In Surah 9, 30, we read, The Jews call Uzzah a son of God. And the Christians call Christ the Son of God. That is a saying from their mouth. In this, they but imitate what the unbelievers of old used to say. Unless cares be on them, how they are deluded away from the truth. So according to this very passage of the Quran, Christians are cursed. Christians calling Jesus the Son of God are cursed by Allah. Why? Because according to the Quran, Jesus is not the Son of God. 
Jesus is not the son of God. And Christians have deluded away from the truth. Why? Because they are teaching Jesus is the son of God. And according to the Quran, why can't God have a son? Why can't God have a son? According to the Quran, Surah 19, I 35. Surah 19, I 35. We read in Surah 19, I 35. It is not befitting to the majesty of Allah that he should beget a son. So according to the Quran, it is unfitting or not befitting to the majesty of God or Allah for him to have a son. So Allah cannot, can never have a son according to the Quran. Therefore, Jesus is not the son of God. Jesus is not the son of God. And if Jesus Christ is not the son of God, then what kind of person is Jesus? What kind of person is Jesus? Surah 5, I 75 gives us the answer. Surah 5, I 75. Christ, the son of Mary, Christ, the son of Mary, was no more than a messenger. The Arabic says, Man Masiha, he be no million illa rasul. Man Masiha, he be no million illa rasul. Christ, the son of Mary, was no more than a messenger. So according to the Quran, Jesus is just a prophet. He is not the son of God. He is just a human being who came to present or preach to us the word of God. But my brother, or my dear viewer, according to the New Testament or according to the Holy Bible, Jesus claimed to be the son of God. Jesus claimed to be the son of God. And in fact, that angel, angel Gabriel, uh, the angel Gabriel, whom was sent, by God to announce the birth of Jesus Christ to Mary, also proclaim Jesus to be the Son of God. Let me read to you something from Luke, chapter number 1, verse number 30 to 35. Luke, Gospel according to Luke, chapter number 1, verse number 30 to 33, to check out what Angel Gabriel taught about Jesus Christ. Angel Gabriel taught about Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 1 verse number 30 to 33. Let's read. It says, Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Verse number 32. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest hallelujah he will be great and will be called the son of the highest so according to angel gabriel jesus christ will be the son of god will be the son of god and this is the same angel muslims are claiming revealed the quran to prophet muhammad known as jibril in islam Angel, uh, Angel uh, Gabriel is known in Islam as Jibril, Malachi Jibril. It is this same angel that Muslims are claiming that he revealed the message of the Quran to Prophet Muhammad. But the, Jibril, uh, the, but the Gabriel of the Bible taught that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Why would this same angel, 600 years later, reveal to Prophet Muhammad that Jesus is not the Son of God? And Jesus is just a human prophet who only came to preach the word of God. So, let's now turn to another teaching concerning Jesus Christ. What was Jesus' mission on this earth? What was Jesus' mission on this earth? According to the Lord Jesus Christ, one of the major reasons he came to this very earth was to die to save man from their sins. Jesus came to die to save man by his blood. And let's, let's, let's check out some of these passages in the New Testament or in the Bible. Matthew chapter number 20 verse number 18 to 19. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem and the son of man will be betrayed to the chief priest and to the scribes and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the gentiles to mock and scourge and to crucify and the third day he will rise again hallelujah so according to the lord jesus christ he's going to be betrayed he's going to be condemned 
He'll be crucified, he'll be buried, and on the third day he'll rise again. So Jesus of the New Testament, or the Jesus of the Bible told that he is coming to die. And on the third day he'll rise again. And Jesus wasn't the only person who told that. According to the Quran, Muslims are to believe in all of God's prophets, including Prophet John the Baptist, whom in Islam is known as Prophet Yahya, John the Baptist. Let's read what Prophet John the Baptist or Yahya or John the Baptist taught about Jesus Christ. Gospel according to John, chapter number 1, verse number 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the lamp of God who takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. So according to John the Baptist, Jesus Christ is God's lamp coming to take away the sins of the world. So Jesus thought that he's going to die to save man by his blood. This is what Jesus Christ taught. Actually, did Jesus die as he predicted? Was Christ crucified as he predicted? We read again in Gospel according to Matthew, chapter number 27, verse number 35. Gospel according to Matthew, chapter number 25, verse number 35. Then they crucified him. Hallelujah. Then they crucified him. So according to the Bible, Jesus was crucified. Jesus Christ was crucified. And there are some people who are teaching that yes, Christ was crucified, but he didn't actually die on the cross. So let's check it out. Did Jesus actually die on the cross or he only swooned? As some Muslims are saying. We further read in Matthew chapter 27, verse number 50. Matthew chapter 27, verse number 50. Jesus, when he had cried out again with a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. I take it again. Jesus, when he had cried out again with a loud voice, yielded up his spirit, meaning he died. So according to the Holy Bible, Jesus died. The Jesus of history, the Jesus of the New Testament died as he predicted. And later in the book of Revelation, later in the book of Revelation, this is what Jesus revealed to Apostle John. I am he who lives and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I take it again. I am he who lives and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore, forevermore. Amen. So according to the Bible, Jesus died. Jesus was crucified for the sins of the world. And he, he, he taught in the New Testament that he's going to die and it's by his blood that man will be saved. We read in Matthew chapter number 26, verse number 28. Matthew 26, verse number 28. This is what Jesus Christ said concerning how man will be saved. Matthew 26, verse number 28. This is what Jesus taught. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. So Jesus taught that his blood is going to be shed for the remission of the whole of humanity, their sins, the sins that we have committed against God, he is come to die to save us by his blood. And in Matthew chapter number 20, verse number 28, Matthew chapter 20, verse number 28, this is uh, what Jesus said again concerning how he's come to save man. Matthew chapter 20, verse number 28, just as the Son of Man did not come to be saved, but to save and to give his life a ransom for many. So Jesus came to save us. And how did Jesus save us? By giving his life to ransom us from the bondage of sin and death. So according to the Holy Bible, Jesus was crucified. And in fact, the fact of the crucifixion is even attested by secular history. The fact of Jesus' crucifixion is not only uh, documented or is not only attested by the Christian Bible, but even secular historians like Flavius Josephus. 
in his writings also taught that Christ was crucified during the reign of Pontius Pilate. Now, let's check final from the Quran. Is the Quran going to confirm the fact that Jesus Christ was crucified as Prophet Muhammad claimed in the Quran that Christians and Jews should believe in the Quran because the message of the Quran came to confirm the message of the Bible? Is Muhammad going to confirm the fact that Christ was crucified and rose up on the third day? Is Muhammad going to confirm? Let's check it out. In Surah 4, Ayah 157, that is Quran chapter 4, verse number 157. This is what the Quran says. They said in boast, We killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. But they killed him not, nor crucified him, but so it was made to appear to them. And those who differ therein are full of doubt, with no certain knowledge, but only conjecture to follow. For of a surety they killed him not. So according to the Quran, Christ was not crucified. And the Arabic say, Wakaulihim. In the Katanal Masiha, Isa ibn Miriam, Rasulullah. Wama kataluhu, wama sabuhu, walakin shobi halahum. It was only made to appear to people that Christ was crucified, but for of a surety he was not crucified. Wama kataluhu yakina. This is what Muhammad came 600 years later to tell us about Christ. That Christ actually was not crucified. And that the crucifixion event was only a fiction. It was only a deception God used in deceiving the world that Christ had been crucified. But my brothers and my sisters, we have seen from the Holy Bible that the crucifixion of Christ is something that happened in history. And it's not just something that Christians sat down somewhere and concocted to deceive the world. Even the prophets who prophesied about the Messiah. The prophet who prophesied about the Messiah. According to the Quran, Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the al masih the Messiah. And Muslims are commanded in the Quran to believe in all the prophets. Including Prophet Isaiah, Prophet Daniel. And all these prophets in the Old Testament prophesied that the Messiah coming will be crucified or will come and will atone for the sin of the world by his blood. Let me read to you the passage in the Quran that commands all Muslims to believe in the prophets. Surah 2, Ayah 136. Surah 2, Ayah 136. This is what the Quran says. This is what the Quran says. Say, say ye, we believe in Allah and the revelation given to us and to Abraham, Ismael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes, and that given to Moses and Jesus, and that given to all prophets from their Lord. We make no differences between one and another of them, and we bow to Allah in Islam. So according to this passage of the Quran, Muslims are to believe in all the prophets of God who came in history, including Prophet Isaiah and Prophet Daniel. And what did this prophet taught about Christ? One of the things the prophet taught about Christ was that Christ is coming to die. The Messiah is coming to die to save the world through his blood. And this is what the prophet taught. This is what prophet Isaiah taught. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse number 8. Isaiah 53, verse number 8. For he was cut off from the land of the living, that is the Messiah. For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people he was stricken. So according to this prophecy of Isaiah, the Messiah coming will be cut off for the transgression of mankind. And Muhammad taught that his message recorded in the Quran came to confirm all these messages recorded to us in the Bible. But my dear viewer, what have the evidence shown? Is the Quran actually confirming the message 
of the Judeo Christian scriptures as it played in Surah 4, Ayah 47, and in Surah 3, Ayah 3 to 4. So, is the Quran confirming the message of the Bible as we have seen so far? My brothers and my sisters, my dear viewer, from the evidence that we have shown to you, it is so clear that the claim by the Quran that the message it came with came to confirm the message of the Judeo Christian scriptures has no foundation, has no basis, is so deceptive and fallacious. Jesus of the New Testament or the Jesus of the Bible claimed to be the Son of God. The Jesus of the Bible claimed to be the one coming to die to save people through his blood. But Prophet Muhammad came 600 years later to change this message. In fact, in the Bible, the Bible prophets and the apostles warn us, warn us about those who would come and change the Christian gospel. We are told in the book of Galatians, chapter number 1, verse number 6 to 9, this is what the Christian apostle Paul penned. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Verse 8, but even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you, then what we have preached to you, let him be a case. Verse 9, as we have said before, so now I say again, if any preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be a case. So according to this passage, Christians are to be careful about any prophet who will come and present a different gospel. And from what we have examined so far, this gospel of the Quran or this message of the Quran is actually another gospel. In fact, the Jesus of the Bible is different from the Jesus of the Quran. Why? Because the Jesus of the Bible claimed to be the Son of God. The Jesus of the Bible was crucified for the sin of the world. But Prophet Muhammad came 600 years later and in this Quran denied the sonship of Christ and said that Christians calling Christ the Son of God a curse. Again, he denied the crucifixion of Jesus Christ for sin. He denied the crucifixion of Jesus Christ for sin. So my brother, my sister, we humbly submit to you to see where the truth lies. The Jesus of the Bible is someone that we can check historically. It's not just a person that people sat down and conjured. He's someone that you can go into secular history and find out the truth concerning him. So, is the claim by Prophet Muhammad that the Quran and Islam came to confirm the message of the Judeo Christian scriptures true? As you have seen, it is not true. We humbly invite you to consider Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. We invite you to believe in Him as the only person taking you to heaven. Repent from your sins and submit your life to Jesus Christ in baptism and faithfully follow His teachings to the time that you will die or this world will come to an end. God bless you and it's our prayer that we are going to journey through this fact to see where the truth lies and that this truth will finally set you free. God bless you for watching and bye bye.